multi-trillion dollar global tourism industry undoubtedly brings many benefits, from wealth and employment to greater international connectivity. But it also carries environmental and other costs. As well as being a major contributor to global warming, it can cause pollution, the loss of natural habitats and social stress. This is particularly so for Europe's most popular locations, which are buckling under the weight of ever-growing numbers. Now, with mass tourism predicted to keep growing in coming years, some of their inhabitants have had enough of the selfie-taking crowds. Jeg har faktisk aldrig været i Dubrovnik før, og alligevel så virker det utroligt velkendt. Og det skyldes nok, at byen den har lagt kulisser til en Star Wars-film, en ny filmatisering af Robin Hood, og ikke mindst den nok mest populære tv-serie lige nu, nemlig Game of Thrones. Dubrovnik in Croatia has long been one of the Mediterranean's most popular tourist destinations. But after scenes from the TV series Game of Thrones were filmed here, more tourists have been coming. We've rented an apartment in the oldest part of the city, where one of the most iconic sequences was shot. Så man træffer fra Walk of Shame her. Lige der. Det er simpelthen midt i King's Landing. A sinner comes before you. Cersei of House Lannister. So this would be the same shot that Cersei would take on the way down. Places like this, that have something extra special to offer, have seen an explosion in the number of visitors. In the 1950s, there were only 25 million tourists worldwide. Today, there are more than 1.4 billion a year. The boom has been a blessing for some, bringing jobs and revenue and new opportunities. But for others, it has been a curse. Det er problem med en jæger eller ti jæger eller hundre jæger. Vi kan jo få tusind for dagen. And now, a new so-called set jetters phenomenon is boosting global tourism. People choosing a holiday destination as a direct result of seeing it in a movie or on TV. Do a selfie. A selfie. Gary and Jenny are two such set jetters from Leeds, England. It's amazing to see, like this, like this walk of shame part, and it's just to see the, the locations, that you know, the views, that you can see them in real life. So you're getting whipped saying shame. 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 It's an amazing wall, medieval city. Uh, it's a brilliant location for Game of Thrones and King's Landing. I know a lot of it was computer generated, but there's a lot of places around here where it's actual scenes. And we will stop here again, but I will just kindly ask you to occupy only one side of the bridge. I will tell you what these landmarks are. Only 1,500 people actually live in Dubrovnik's Old Town, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But last year, 1.3 million tourists came to visit. House of Undying. House of Undying, exactly, but do you know the location? Um, it was... Up the, there! Uh, You've done your homework! Uh, everybody likes it at the moment. It's one of, probably one of the all-time greatest shows ever made. Um, high it's budget. massive in the UK. He's obsessed. <laughs> <A passion. laughs> He's very obsessed. He knows every character, everything that's going on. It's clear what being here means for the die-hard fans of the cult series. But overall, the city is now bursting at the seams. It's just so packed. It's, it's all tourist now, isn't it? It's, Due to Game of Thrones. An explosion of visitor numbers is by no means unique to Dubrovnik, nor are the problems that brings. Mass tourism may have some obvious benefits, but in recent years, many of those on the receiving end of the influx have had enough. In Venice, there have been noisy demonstrations against overcrowding and its toll on the city's fragile ecosystem. In Thailand, beaches have been closed because of environmental damage. In Barcelona, 
tourist buses have had their tires slashed. So these are the two. In Austria, the annual tourist season is gathering pace. Good afternoon, my dear. This is Hallstatt, a village in the Alps, which in a short time has become one of Europe's most popular destinations. Hallstatt stands for beautiful landscape. Just under 800 people live in Hallstatt, but every year more than a million tourists flock here for the remarkable scenery, and the numbers, especially from Asia, keep rising. Hue and Ling are sisters from Singapore. They're on a month-long vacation around Europe. They share photos from their journey on social media. That's the scenery. Visiting Hallstatt was on top of their list. I just want to see the beautiful scenery. I saw it from the internet. It has those photos for the four season. Um, and I just want to witness it with my own eyes. Very pretty. <laughs> Sie können da nicht stehen. Sie müssen wegfahren. Sie, Sie können da nicht. Here only inhabitants. Hallstatt's mayor, Alexander Scholz, is desperately trying to handle the crowds. So, stop. Good job. So, der kann da nicht reinfallen. Außer er wäre ein Hallstätter. Ja? Und trotzdem probieren Sie es. But the mayor isn't complaining. A few years ago, his village was dying. Modern tourism really took off in West Europe in the 1960s, when the middle classes first gained the spare time and money to go on package holidays. What was once a luxurious experience, only to be enjoyed by the rich, is now relatively commonplace. These days, taking a plane is like catching a bus or a train, and not much more expensive. Cheap flights have given tourism a huge boost. In the last decade, global airline passenger numbers have doubled as a consequence to more than 4.3 billion a year. And it's no longer only those from the richest nations who are traveling. People from all over the world are now on the move. For Huawei and Ling, and for most of the tourists here, the journey has one purpose to shoot as many selfies as possible. Instagram tourism, as it's sometimes known, is a fast growing trend. Almost 40% of young tourists admit in surveys that their choice of destination is influenced by what the location will look like in their pictures. I will just pick a few photos to put in the Instagram. Put it um, in a private uh, account so that only my close friend which can see all the photos that I posted. I think it's kind of sharing. It's not to say to show off, <laughs> just sharing, like there's such a places and my friend will start to ask where is it, I'll just tell them and they can experience themselves as well. In China, they're so fond of Hallstatt that they've built Hash Estate, a copy of the Austrian village. In South Korea, Hallstatt forms the setting of a television show. And in many places in Asia, pictures of Hallstatt pop up on posters, calendars, and Google. For my friend, they say you must visit Austria because uh, it's really beautiful. So when I search Austria, this picture come into the internet and I just dig into it and see uh, the name is Hostad. Osbjorg Self claims to have the best view of Stavanger in Norway. Or rather, she has until 8 a.m. every morning before the first crowds of tourists appear. 
Der har vi jo hele byen og ind i fjorderne. Vi kan til og med se snøen ind i fjellene herifra. Når jeg ikke ser på disse boligblokkene som ligger her, så har vi fantastisk udsigt. Vi skal ha i løbet av sommermånedene skal vi ha 250 skib inne. Cruise ships can now dock right in the center of Stavanger. The extra revenue this generates fills the coffers of the city's port, but it's becoming a real nuisance for the residents. Det er det som er veldig attraktivt for turistene. Ikke for oss, men for turistene. Jeg sa vel en gang at vi følte av og til at vi kvelte snart. Det mener jeg. Det er nok nå. Nå bør vi ikke ha mer, for det ødelegger også fordi turistene skal få noe ut av å komme her til. Når det er så mye folk i kø, så ødelegger de jo en del for de også. Osbjørg er en retired hairdresser. Hun spender mest av tiden i hennes garden. Ja, men jeg synes det er kjekt. Det er dauffen! She and her husband bought their dream house almost two decades ago. In those days, the number of tourists wasn't an issue. Men i løpet av de siste 17 årene så har det bare steget og steget. Vet du, var en turist en gang som har talt med at hvis de tok 50 øre for, eller en krone for hvert billet, så hadde de vært rike. Around 350,000 cruise ship passengers will visit Stavanger during the season this year. Local businesses welcome the money they bring, although generally seaborne tourists spend less than others because they have everything they need on the ship. Det er ikke det er ikke de så små butikker som hadde trengt det, små små restauranter som hadde trengt det. Det er ikke de som kjenner noe videre på det. Det er Havnevæsene, disse herrene, småbådene, busselskapene og guidekompaniene. Disse folkene for en halv dag har fått sin vei blokket. Og jeg vet ikke hvor mange andre cruiseskip kommer inn daglig. 250 i året. Virkelig? Det må være vært for dem å ta et bilde av deres hus. Men det er hva du forventer når du bor i en cruiseskip-tavn. Det er hvorfor vi ikke bor i den, tror jeg. Et sted må det være en stopp. Og det er det punktet her vi kom til for en stund siden. Velkommen til Karaka. Det vil ta oss approximately 45 minutter til å reach King's Landing. Det er veldig bra, hva? Så den natt er dark og full av terror. People are happy because you know that what you gave them wasn't just an empty story. It was a good story. It was honest story. You aren't you helping uh, turning Dubrovnik into some sort of a Disneyland? Well, that's what that's what we are uh, trying to avoid. You know, Dubrovnik is becoming Disneyland-ish regardless of the Game of Thrones. So you have an opportunity to sail on a ship that the nearest Targaryen used to cross a narrow sea. And that was filmed on the front deck of our Caraca. The tourism itself changed in Dubrovnik, in Croatia, Croatia actually, on our entire coast. Until the Homeland War, people were renting their apartments, let's say, and they had guests that were coming to their places for 10 years in a row. See that beach mm -hmm. across? This is where royal family wished farewell to, to Marcella. You can have both in frame. Guide the princess on her church. May the mother give her health. May the crown give her wisdom. May the warrior give her courage. People are not visiting the same locations for 10 years in a row because the, I believe that the traveling became more affordable. And now you have opportunities for even less money to visit places far, far away. Tourism has changed Dubrovnik completely. In the old town, one in four residents have left in the last eight years. 
Now I live outside of the old town because uh, I find uh, the old town a little bit too crowded, especially during summer months. You hardly can walk and you can't park. And, uh, shopping is limited and such a thing. Bojol Fistanic rents out the apartment he used to live in. Tourism is now his main income. He's bought 20 apartments in the old quarter and he's renting them all out. When I was a boy, uh, we used to play uh, ball uh, in the streets and uh, uh, local uh, uh, grandmothers used to dry clothes on uh, uh, the ropes and such things that you hardly see anymore. So there are less and less inhabitants because it's too expensive. Dubrovnik needs to keep Dubrovnik's identity. It shouldn't be misplaced with a King's Landing. But King Land, King's Landing was filmed in Dubrovnik, so you cannot avoid King's Landing in Dubrovnik. In Holstadt, the municipality cashes in every time a tourist parks a rented car, checks in at the hotel, or even when they use the public toilets. For some local tradesmen too, tourism is also a gravy train. Johannes Janu is a local carpenter. Ja, ich bin, bin Handwerker, ich bin in Hallstatt da in die Schule gegangen, ich bin Drechslermeister. Drechslerei ist, ist eigentlich äh, praktisch totgeschrieben gewesen. Die äh, Fertigung ist sehr groß in den industriellen Bereich äh, gegangen. But when mass tourism arrived in Holstadt, his business flourished. Ich kann mittlerweile ein, ein Haus bauen, was ich erworben habe vor 15 Jahren. Und äh, es wäre faktisch unvorstellbar mit einem, einem äh, Einkommen als, als einfacher Handwerker oder als Einzelhandelskaufmann ein, ein Haus mit 280 Quadratmeter Grundfläche alleine zu errichten und, und in, Stand, in Stand zu setzen. Not everyone in Holstadt is happy. Jörg Zimmermann has lived here all his life. Now he's considering moving away because the noise and disruption are becoming unbearable. Das ist gut, weil selbst wenn wir die Fenster geschlossen haben, Doppelfenster haben, dass wenn wir drinnen sitzen, dass drinnen auch laut ist. Und auch wenn wir auf der Terrasse heraus sitzen, ist es einfach unangenehm laut. Wir versuchen mit dem Ganzen fertig zu werden. Muss ich ganz ehrlich, wir haben schon überlegt, ob wir nicht eine psychologische Beratung in Anspruch nehmen. Ganz ehrlich, ja. Weil uns einfach der Lärm, das ist das, was auf die Nerven geht. Mhm. Ja. Was hat das damit auf sich? Also, no drone zone? Bekannt Aber wir haben das Problem die. gehabt, dass wenn wir beim Tisch gesessen sind, dass wir einen Meter vom Fenster die Drohnen stehen gehabt haben. Das heißt, die Leute sind umeinander geflogen mit den Drohnen und haben uns in unserer Privatsphäre gefilmt. Oder wir haben beim Schlafzimmer haben wir ein Glasdach, zum Beispiel hinten draus. Da setzt die Drohne über sich dann plötzlich. Es entsteht eine Kluft zwischen jenen, die enorm profitieren und jenen, die glauben, gar nicht zu profitieren. Und das hat sich natürlich aufgetan. Und das ist eine gefährliche Situation für einen Ort, der ja ein Zusammenleben braucht, ein Vereinsleben braucht. From the Austrian Alps, it's back to Norway. This time to Flom, a village in the southwest of the country, which is famous for its fjords. We're here to meet Anders Freytime a farmer turned anti-tourism activist. <laughs> In 2014, he attracted international attention when he set up a series of giant signs protesting against the cruise ships that bring 270,000 tourists annually to the area. So, hey, hang by by hang you no cruise ships save the salmon. But there was traffic farly, so there was a boat. And the commune came and took it So now can you begin to look at Putin or something? I don't much better here, actually. Who 
Vi har mer att rysta med per fastboende än Venezia och Barcelona. Då är vi över i något vi kallar people pollution. Och det är ju inte bra. Det är väldigt dåligt för gästen och och det är väldigt dåligt för fastboende och det är egentligen det är massor turism. Anders has allies in the fight against the cruisers. Last year, media all over the world published this picture of a local politician in another Norwegian fjord protesting naked against the cruise ship invaders. Det var nummer tre skilt. Det står no cruise ship. Ja, och där kunde de på något sätt inte leva med. Så det var ju bötlagt. Tror jag var bot och fjärning och de fann på all slags ja, de finläs allt som var byggningslover och sånt och så fann de några paragrafer och Of course, the municipality does well financially from the influx of tourists. But the environment clearly suffers too. Recent studies have shown that a big cruise ship emits as many particles a day as the traffic of a medium-sized city with around 500,000 cars. And what's more, the vessels release up to three times more CO2 per passenger kilometer than an aircraft. That has huge consequences for global warming. Today, one of the very largest cruise ships has docked. If you have a little bit of a thought for the environment, it's not good. It's the best way you can travel. It's a whole society that comes in here, isn't it? There's 4,337 packs on board in that boat. As long as we have done it in the West, it's been great, but now it's like this. We've got the Chinese, the Indian, the Indonesian people, the very people. The planet has a lot of resources to this. We need 3,5 hours to get to this boat. But we don't have it. Anders Anders isn't against tourists in principle. He has four small cabins of his own to rent. But every fourth tourist here in Flom now comes with the cruise ships. And Anders fears that they're scaring away the traditional guests who used to come for a longer time and spend more money. I had it in five years. This is the one in Norway. This is the one that people buy and this is the one that people buy. There's nothing else. Det är rätt att bli bra då. Det blir väldigt... Eh... Tror du det är samma kvaliteten som de första då? Och så tror jag är väldigt förnöjd med att det inte är, det är inte silikon, så att de släpper den här eh, groingen på silikon. Jag är liv under norsk eh, skatteregler och norska eh, avgiftsregler. Jag måste ansätta någon som betalar arbetsgivaravgift, jag betalar skatt, jag betalar avgift på allt möjligt att köpa. Vi talar... Alltså det är ju, vi talar ju ingenting. Det är ju registrerat i skatteparadis kring hela kloden. What kind of Game of Thrones cocktails do you have? So we do the Jon Snow. Okay. It's quite yummy. I definitely suggest that one. Yeah. Back in Dubrovnik, one can, of course, also find a bar with a Game of Thrones theme. I just got a Jon Snow. And the themed cocktails are, naturally, served with an episode of the hit series. Most of my friends call me a Game of Thrones geek. <laughs> my wife is going to be really, really angry that I'm watching this here with you and not with yeah. her. <laughs> There's nothing to suggest that mass tourism has reached a peak yet, here in Dubrovnik or in the rest of the world. It's a gigantic global industry that's only going to keep on growing. If, if you respect the laws and you respect the buildings and you don't cause any damage, then I don't see the problem. You've just got to be respectful. But shouldn't we all think a little more carefully about how and to where we travel? I'd like to go to Morocco. I'd like to go to the locations in Spain and Northern Ireland as well. Or perhaps each of us has to choose whether to be among those tourists who leave scars on the places we visit or stay at home in front of the TV. As long as uh, I keep enjoying it, I'll keep doing it.